I thought this would be fun. I was browsing Amazon the other day and I saw this thing and I had to have it. So I figured let's uh, let's share this with the channel and see what's interesting about it and whether it works good, bad, or indifferent. It's a pretty high quality looking device. This is made by Tway. Maybe it's maybe it's Tway Audio. <laughs> they they spell it T W A Y R D I O. Tway Audio. Tway 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 Audio. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. We'll, we'll see what happens. According to this, it is model DC-143. It can handle 20 watts worth of power being thrown at it. It has an impedance of 50 ohms. It has an SWR of less than 1.5 to 1. It has a gain of 1.8 or 2.8. I guess that depends on the frequency. So 1.8 on 144 and 2.8 on 430. And this is an SMAF, which means it's going to be compatible with most of your Baofeng UV5Rs and your BTECs and all your other kind of radios that are out there. So I wanted to do some bench work first, and then we'll do some power meter work, and then we'll get out in the field and we'll do some out in the field work. We'll see how well that works out. It sounds like a whole lot of work. I don't know. I'm gonna get out my trusty meter because I wanna see some, some things. I wanna see some stuff with this. There it is. There's our continuity test. So I wanna test again the center conductor and the outer. Okay, so they're not connected together. They do kind of look like they would be connected together because this lead here connects. So maybe the outer runs up and around this side and then this is actually an insulator. Let's take a look at that. Plug that in there. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Interesting. Okay, so that's, that's touching the meter itself. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Okay, let's do the the outer shield. Nothing there, nothing there. Yeah, so it's not connected at all. That's interesting. So this does look kind of like a mini mag loop, and it might be working like a mini mag loop. Switch functions. There we go. Let's try this one here. Nothing at all. Interesting. So how does it work? Interesting question. I guess another question would be, does it work? Let's get the power meter out and see what we can come up with. This is my Shorecom SW102, and it has the wrong kind of connectors on it, but that's okay because we have connector adapters and we have connector cables and a bunch of other stuff. Let's get the ground plane plugged in. Now we've got a ground plane for our antenna. And what we're going to do is we're going to test this with the rubber duct that comes with the 6x2, the BTEC 6x2. This BTEC 6x2 right here as a reference. All right, now we've got all of our adapters in line. This is the standard rubber duct antenna. Turn it on. 54321, power on. Wake this one up. All right, and so I want to switch to 14. Nope. 146.52. Okay, that's on low power. Let me switch the power setting here. TX power. Why would it be in radio settings? All right, so we're on turbo power now. I don't know why it's in channel settings. Well, I kind of know why it's in channel settings, but that's beside the point. All right, so let's key up and we're reading anywhere between 5.35 and six watts at 1.02. So, where's my where's my lighting? There we go. 1.02 to 1 on the internal rubber duck on 146.52. Let's switch this over to 446.000. And we're doing 7.6 watts, 2.73 SWR. Okay, so let's switch antennas over to this new one here. 
So we're still on 446, we're still on turbo power. Oh, that does put out some more power, interesting. SWR is 2.6 and the power is 9.09 .09 watts. So we're able to get more power out of the mini loop antenna. Let's switch it over to 146.52 again. And we're at 3.29 watts. And SWR is 5.94, that's really bad SWR. Yeah, so the SWR is pretty bad and the power output's pretty high. So I don't know. And considering this isn't working like a normal antenna would work, I don't know if we're comparing apples to oranges or not. All right, let's see what this thing looks like on the Nano VNA. And I know y'all is curious about all that. I know you guys don't trust a VNA that isn't calibrated, so we're gonna get it calibrated here real quick. Let's hit the calibration button and let's do the calibration assistant. And yep, that's what I wanna do is the calibration assistant. Press okay. It says, please ensure that the Nano VNA is connected before we do that. So let's go back over here and hit connect. Hey, now we're connected. Let's do calibration. Calibration assistant again, yes. Connect the short to channel zero. Let's connect the short to channel zero. Okay. Let's connect the open to channel zero. Hey, look, it's open. Let's connect the load to channel zero. And let's apply the calibration. Excellent. Now we need to connect the antenna. Okay, and we wanna do a sweep. Let's do sweep settings. We'll pick the band of two meters and we will pad 25%, and we will set the band sweep. That's six meters. Two meters, set the band sweep. Let's try holding it. It's a little better when you hold it, 3.59 at 143. Let's change this over to 70 centimeters. Well, the SWR is better on 70 centimeters, 2.5 at 439 and a half. Well, that's what it looks like on the Nano VNA. Still getting used to this gimbal. Is there some reason why all ham radio antennas come in bright yellow bags? I don't really get that. So this antenna that I got, first off, I saw it on Amazon and I had to have it. Remind you anybody? So, there's a couple of interesting stories about this. Number one, I've always said this, two meter in my area is not all that prevalent, not all that popular, it's not all that big of a thing. And this was no exception. I plugged in the antenna and I kerchunked and nothing kerchunked back. So I got in the car and went for a drive. And while I'm going for the drive, I stopped on top of the hill and tried to make a contact in the direction of the nearest repeater and nothing. I changed out to the super elastic signal stick antenna from Signal Stuff, fantastic antenna, and also nothing. So I have nothing to compare it to. Okay, let's go for yet another, uh, you know, another walk, another, another drive, another something. And I moved to the top of the next lowest hill, which put me, I don't know, another 10 minutes closer to that repeater. Still didn't get it, still didn't happen. Okay. So I'll drive about a half an hour farther and tried it out and that still didn't make any difference with either of the two antennas. So at this point, I know it's not the antenna that's not performing, but I also don't have anything to share with you other than the antenna's not working and that's not a good thing. So I don't wanna share that with you. The SWR readings are really high on this for what appears to be no real apparent reason whatsoever. Um, other than the way it's designed. The continuity test that I did earlier, the reason why that didn't work is because the exposed copper bits, the exposed metal bits are covered in an enamel. So you'd have to break through the enamel. I'm not gonna do that. Um, I still wanna figure out how this thing works, but since it doesn't actually work, it wouldn't matter whether I figured it out or not. Interesting side note though, when I stopped on top of the hill on the side of the road to test the antenna, a police officer came up behind me. What are you doing, son? Well, you know, I'm a radio engineer and I'm testing out uh, some frequency propagation. Oh, uh, and then he left. But, uh, you know, it was nice that they stopped to give me a little wellness check there. I was pretty happy about that. 
at any rate, that is a wrap on this antenna. I can't recommend whether you should buy it or not. There's a link down in the description if you want to try it out for yourself. I get a little bit of a kickback, so it helps the channel grow. I appreciate you watching, and there is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next, right over top of my face. Thanks for being awesome.